What normally is a road resembled more of a river today as Tropical Storm Halong caused heavy flooding throughout several parts of the island. For Lucy Rangel, the flooding was more than expected, evident by the brave trek she made through the water and down vegetation in front of her house just to speak with KUAM. This is actually pretty normal for us. If you guys know, uh, Vessel Brian always gets flooded all the way from the court to um, Napa. So this is not so unusual, but this is actually pretty bad because the water goes all the way down there and the cars get stuck in here. But you know, what can you do? Rango has lived on West O'Brien Drive for close to eight years and says this year, let alone the past few weeks, have been the worst for floods. Our cars uh, unfortunately cannot make it, so we have to move them on the other side of the parking lot. We cannot even have them by our house. So basically you're stuck in your house for the time being. Yes, unless you have a boat, then you can make it out of here. <laughs> Along with Rest O'Brien Drive, several other areas were reportedly deemed impassable due to flooding and down vegetation, such as Route 4 in Marizzo, Route 6 in Petey by Veterans Cemetery, several areas along Route 1 including the Kmart intersection in Upper Tumon and Salisbury Street in Derido, and Route 10A near the airport. And what's normally flooded with visitors instead were pools of water throughout Pleasure Island. We even saw some motorists trapped or slowly making their drive through Tumon. Despite being advised to stay off the road, several motorists still made their way through several heavily flooded areas from Hagatnya to Tumon to here on Hamburger Road in Harmon. But for pros like Rango, while it's an unfortunate situation, she says her family, along with others in the area, not only expect the floods, but make preparations for their homes. I'm pretty sure everybody in this area, they know. They know what's coming. So we all ready. We all have our sandbags. We all tape our doors and we just, you know, ride it out. The island's mayors and vice mayors, meanwhile, have spent the past two days working around the clock helping residents. The Joint Information Center reported mayor's office staff cleaning secondary roads, but were relying on the Guam Power Authority and the Department of Public Works to clear debris that were blocking primary roads and removing vegetation, leaning on power lines and causing outages. I actually did speak to our mayor about this, and they did fix it a couple of years back, they told me. And there's not much you can do because this is a sea level, so even if you fix the piping, the water has nowhere to go. So this is pretty much the status quo forever. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Ken Quintaniza.